Are you looking for a way to quickly compost all of your kitchen scraps into a nutrient-rich fertilizer for all your plants? I'm going to show you exactly how to do that by building your very own worm farm in today's video, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Today we're building a worm farm. This is a fantastic way to quickly compost all of your vegetable scraps into a very nutrient-rich fertilizer for your plants. The worms will eat this stuff up. They will uh, produce uh, worm castings, which you then in turn can either just top dress your plants with or make a worm tea out of, mix it with some water, and water your plants with, and it's one of the best fertilizers you can get. So let me show you how to do this. It's pretty simple. It's really, there's a hundred ways to do it. This is the way I'm going to do it. First thing you need is a container, probably two containers actually. You could do this with five gallon buckets. You could do this with, you know, ice cream containers. There's even people that have done it with like sour cream containers, very small little worm farms. But really the bigger you go, the better, uh, within reason. You want something, here's a couple of considerations, to, to a uh, couple of things to consider. There we go. Um, worms that we're going to be using are red wigglers. There's a couple of different types of worms but red wigglers are probably the best at composting. They eat their body weight in food every single day. So if you have a pound of worms, they'll eat roughly a pound of kitchen scrap every single day. So those are the probably the best ones to get. You can order them online, you can find somebody that has worms, and they will more than likely give you some. So you don't have to worry about actually buying any. Um, you can do it a couple of different ways. They are not native to North America though. They're like a tropical worm. So they don't handle extremes in temperature very well. Extremely hot, or extremely cold. So you're going to want to probably put this somewhere where it's a little bit more climate controlled. Um, if you are going to keep it outside, make sure you keep it in the shade, not in direct sun, and make sure that if you're going to keep it outside in the winter, you get below about 50 degrees, it needs to be insulated or your worms are going to die. I plan on keeping this inside. There's really not much of an odor. You don't really notice it at all, so it's no problem to keep it in the house, keep it in a closet, whatever you want to do with it. Um, so you don't want to go so big that you don't have room to put it in the house. But really in general, the bigger the better. I'm going to be using these, uh, these aren't Rubbermaid brand, I don't remember what brand they are, but these tubs. Um, and uh, I've got two of them because when you, you, let me show you how this is put together and then it'll make sense why I've got two of them. All right, this is the, the tub that the uh, worms are actually going to be kept in. Let me get a little closer to the camera. And you can see what I've done is I've drilled a series of holes along the side here for ventilation. And I've also drilled holes in the bottom so that they have all the liquid can drain out through the bottom. That's why we need two tubs. This tub is going to catch all the liquid. Now you do need to put something in the bottom of the tub so when you put this inside here, it doesn't sit all the way down. It needs to sit up a little bit so the air, the ventilation in the top here, um, the air can get in. Um, you don't want to close this up and make it airtight or your worms will die. They need air. They need oxygen. They need good airflow. So what I've used here, you could use pretty much anything you want. I've just got some soda cans. Um, I drink a lot of soda, so I always have soda cans handy. Um, you could use, you know, clay pots. You could use whatever. It doesn't need to be much, just a couple of inches tall. Um, use something fairly sturdy, though, because this is going to get pretty heavy um, over time. Initially, it's going to be pretty light, but it's going to get heavy over time. Um, so you know, I would caution against using wood, um, you know, two by four chunks, they would work pretty well, but they get pretty nasty. Um, they start to mildew, they start to mold. So I would stick with, uh, you know, metal, plastic, bricks, you know, something like that would be a little bit of a better choice. But this is pretty easy. Again, just a series of holes in the bottom and holes around the top for ventilation. There's no um, specific number of holes you need, how big they have to be. It's just whatever. I think I used a... Uh, I don't know, what is this, maybe a quarter inch drill bit? I don't even know. I just drilled a bunch of holes in it. That's all that you have to worry about. We're going to stick this one inside there, and that's going to catch all the moisture that comes off here. Periodically, what's going to happen is this is going to start filling up with liquid. You'll take this tub out. You'll dump off all the liquid, dilute that down about three parts water to one part liquid, and then water your plants with that, and it's a great nutrient source. So anyway, putting this together is very, very easy. Um, what you're going to put in here is a dry material, and you can use a number of different things. Probably the two most common things would be newspaper. Don't use glossy pages. Use just plain old newspaper. So I've got a newspaper here I'm going to be using. 
or dead leaves, dead dried up leaves. That's another common source of material that you can use to, to start your bin with. You probably don't want to use like grass clippings, just mow your yard and use grass clippings. They get very, very hot when they start to compost and they tend to clump together and there's a lot of moisture in there and you probably don't want that. You want something more dry. So um, it's pretty easy what we're going to do here is I'm just going to take my newspaper and uh, I'm going to kind of tear it in some strips and then I'm going to bunch it together pretty good and throw it in the bottom here. And they really need this kind of bunched together pretty good because that's how they kind of slough off their skin, um, their eggs. That's how they slough off their eggs is crawling through the, the newspaper, the dead leaves, and they slough off their eggs that way. And that helps them to reproduce. So you really do want to clump it together pretty good. And I'm just going to fill the bottom of my container here with this newspaper. All right, so you can see what I've done is just kind of... Um, filled the bottom with the newspaper and then I'm going to go ahead and take some leaves because they're just a little bit more abundant than newspaper is and I'm going to throw some leaves in there. And you don't need a ton of material. The sticks are not bad to have in there but I go ahead and pull them out uh, just because. You don't need a ton of material. Um, you know a quarter of the way whatever. Just, uh, just some material in there to get them kind of started with. That's probably more than I actually need. And that's pretty much it. It is ready to put my worms in. So let me get them and then uh, we'll show you the next step. All right, so these are my worms. I've got some food for them here. Let me pull them out here. You can see kind of what they look like. These are red wiggler worms. They're tiny, not very big worms, really. Um, so I'm just going to lay these uh, pieces of newspaper in here. There's a whole bunch of them in there right there. And we're just going to dump them in. There's nothing special to the way we're doing this. Now I've got my worms in there, and a couple of things that worms really hate. One thing, they really hate light, so they're not going to stay on the top of this very much. They're going to dive down into this uh, stuff here. Um, what I like to do is take a couple of pieces of uh, newspaper here on top, and then just lay that over the top of, the, uh, of everything, and that provides them with, uh, with cover, so they don't have to worry about the, uh, the light. All right, now you could leave it like this if you wanted to. I like to put a lid on it because um, I do have a dog, so that keeps the dog from getting into it. If you have cats or anything like that, it's probably a good idea to use a lid. If you are gonna use the lid, make sure you drill plenty of holes in it for ventilation, which I've done here. And then uh, I'm just gonna set the lid on there. And that's it. This worm, garden, this worm farm is pretty much ready to go. Now let me show you one more two more things. When it comes to feeding these guys, all you need to do is just peel up this, uh, this newspaper, throw some food in one side, close it back up. That's all there is to it. All right, so let's talk about feeding your worms. What do you feed them and how much? Okay, you pretty much feed them any kind of vegetable scrap. Remember, they are vegetarians, so no meat, no dairy, no oils. So that means don't throw anything like, you know, you sauteed some squash for dinner and your kids didn't eat it, don't throw those leftovers in there. That's going to go rancid. It's not good for them. You want fresh vegetable scraps. Um, but pretty much anything goes on vegetables. You want to take it a little bit easy on the citrus and the onions. A little bit's okay, but you don't want to go overboard with that stuff. Um, they really like sweets, so any kind of fresh fruit like peaches or apples or watermelon, any of that kind of stuff is going to go great. One thing to remember with those though is they have a lot of moisture in them. And if you get too much moisture in your bin, you're going to end up with problems. It's either going to smell bad or when you open it up, you're going to see worms trying to crawl up the sides of the bin to get out of it. That means it's too wet. How you fix that problem is pretty easy. Just get some more dry material, newspaper or dry dead leaves. That's it. Just throw some more of that stuff in there. That'll soak up a lot of that moisture. That'll even it out. Those are probably the only problems you're going to run into it with. These worms, I didn't throw that many in here. They reproduce incredibly fast. Within just a couple of months, you're going to end up with hundreds of worms in there, thousands of worms in there probably. Um, it doesn't take long for them to start reproducing. And before long, you're going to end up with a barrel full of worm castings. I'll show you how to separate those in a few future video at some point because it's not that hard to get your worm castings out of there, um, but you are going to have to do that at some point. 
that's pretty much it as far as how much to feed them um, you know if you peel back and there's just a ton of food left in there you may not want to give them any for a couple of days that's it's going to vary a lot depending on uh, the climate, uh, your worms will slow down a little bit when it's cooler. They'll eat more when it's warmer. Um, the, you know, if there's a lot of worms in there over time with them reproducing, you're going to get a lot more worms and uh, they're going to eat a lot more. So just kind of measure, um, usually about once every two or three days, you probably need to add some additional vegetable scraps in there. But try not to add so much that uh, they don't consume it all within about three days. That's probably your best guide to how much to feed them. You're just going to have to play it by ear. All right, so hopefully you learned something here. Worm farms are a great thing to have. Um, like I said, it's way faster than just composting in your backyard. You throw that stuff in a compost pile, it takes months to break down. These guys will break it down in days. Uh, much, much faster. You get a much better product in the end. Worm castings, way better fertilizer than just plain compost. And um, it's a great way to just use up those scraps. And not only that, it's a great conversation piece. You bring people over, show them your worm farm. Uh, they'll be surprised at how clean it is. It, there's really no smell that comes with these. You can tuck them away in a uh, closet, in a spare room, under a kitchen sink, wherever you want to put them. Nobody's going to even know you have them there unless you let them know. And again, once you get some worms, you don't have to start with a ton. You're always going to have worms. They're going to reproduce like crazy. So hopefully this helps some of you guys out. Let me know if you've got a different take on this, if you've done something different that's worked for you with your worm farms. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, God bless.